This special 3D printing filament makes amazing airless basketballs. The filament that I'm testing today is called PIBA or polyether block amide, and this PIBA is from a company called Filamentum. First thing I had to do was design a 3D model that would work with this PIBA filament, and then after putting in all the recommended settings into my slicer, it looked like it was gonna take about 626 grams and take over two days to print. Before I print with any PIBA filaments, I always make sure to dry the filament for several hours before doing any sort of printing and then I will keep the filament drying the whole time it is printing and just feed the filament directly into the printer. And I also always put down a good layer of some sort of release agent on the printer bed such as this glue or else it can actually fuse to your bed. The PIBA printed nice over the next couple days and the next thing I had to do was remove the supports but I didn't have the Z distance nailed down so what I ended up doing was taking it out to the garage and just using an angle grinder with a sanding disc to just sand the supports off. If you do try this, this is at your own risk and please always wear proper safety equipment like gloves and a respirator. It took a few minutes to grind off all the supports, but after all the supports were grinded off, it cleaned up nicely and it was ready for weighing and bounce testing. It weighed about 629.5 grams, which is a little high, but still very close to the 625 I was going for. Next was the bounce testing and I could tell just after a couple bounces that it was pretty springy and I was excited to test it against some of the other filaments that I've tried. The first bounce test will be against our previous reigning champ, the Kimya Piba S, which is now unfortunately discontinued. The filamentum Piba is the yellow and the Kimya is the white. And after bouncing them against each other, it's hard to say which one has a better bounce. Even looking at the slow-mo, they are both so similar, it's hard to make the call. Next up is the Yasin Piba. It's a Piba that I tried in one of my previous videos. And this test was not nearly as close. After looking at the slow-mo, it's pretty obvious that the filamentum piba just has a better bounce than the yasin piba, which is what I found for the Kimya piba as well. If you've seen my Fiberology Fiberflex 30D video, I'm sure you're curious to know how the filamentum holds up against that. And after bounce testing, the Fiberflex definitely has a bit of a better bounce, but you have to remember that there are definitely some downsides printing with the Fiberflex filament, and that includes just how squishy it is and how long it takes to print a basketball with a slow print time. There has also been at least one dead spot in each one of these basketballs that I've printed, but there's more info on that on my other video. The filamentum piba is just a lot sturdier, which feels way more like a real basketball than the Fiberflex will ever feel. And in my last video, since I didn't test against the real basketball, I thought I'd bust the real basketball out and inflate it to the regulation PSI of 8.5 so that we have an accurate bounce to test against. And after testing the filamentum piba against the regular basketball, they are very, very close. And I'm not going to make a conclusion as far as which one is better. Next up is the durability test. Whenever I test a new airless basketball filament, I always put it through a 500 dribble durability test to see if it's worth taking out to a basketball court and try it out there and it held up well so I did take it out to the court. I spent a long time on the court just taking shots and dribbling it around to test the durability and see how it flies through the air compared to a normal basketball and like my other tests there just seems to be a difference in the air resistance between a normal basketball and the airless basketball. The airless basketballs always seem to fall a little short compared to a normal basketball but it did hold up really nicely the entire time I was out. Whenever I make an airless basketball video, I always get a lot of questions about the settings I use to print them, so I'm just going to go over all of my settings here. After looking at the Filamentum website, the nozzle temperature is between 225 and 245 C, and the bed temperature is between 70 to 90 C. I used Bamboo Studio for my slicer, and I started with a generic PETG profile, and if you edit the numbers just right, it doesn't really matter where you start from, but what I ended up doing was picking a nozzle temperature of 200 145 C and a bed temperature of 80 C and I ended up using a 0.6 diameter nozzle with a 0.3 millimeter layer height. The only other quality setting that I changed was setting the seam position or Z seam to random so that there's not a straight line that could potentially cause durability issues. On the strength settings you can see that I have four wall loops or four walls but on the top I have five and that's just to compensate for a lack of supports underneath and that helps keep the bounce the same throughout the whole ball. The bottom is also just set to four layers. I designed the model so that it is mostly all walls and so the infill won't have a huge effect on some of the printing. I set it to 50% gyroid that seems to work well but 
if you use a different model, it might have more infill in more places, so it could make a difference on other models, but it doesn't make a huge difference here. For the speed settings, I printed everything at just about 40 millimeters per second. The only areas that I changed that was on the overhangs and bridges, which I set to about 20 millimeters per second. Those are really the only things that I changed in any of the speed settings for printing the basketball. For support settings, I used manual tree supports and a tree slim support under that and really what the manual supports mean is that I had to actually paint the supports on the bottom of the basketball so that it would only put supports on the bottom. If you look at support painting you can see kind of where I painted the supports. Once you enable them on just the bottom of the ball and click slice it will automatically add the supports for you. The only other settings I changed in supports is the initial layer expansion which is like the brim for the supports. I set that to 5 and I set the Z distance it was 0.22, but I upped it to 0.28 so the supports come off easier. And for those interested in the cooling settings, I'll bring that up here, but really that's the big summary of the settings I used to print the airless basketball. I would say one of the biggest downsides to making an airless basketball with this filamentum piva is just the cost that it takes to print a full-size basketball. A 500 gram roll of this piva comes in at about $83 USD, so you'll have to purchase two to make a full size. But I will actually be able to help you out with that. I am now a part of their affiliate program and using the coupon code make 20 you can get a 10% discount on the PIVA purchase if you input the coupon code before you check out that will not only help you save money but it also helps support my channel in the process at no cost to you Ever since the Kimia Piba S filament was discontinued, I've been looking for a worthy replacement, and even though you're paying a little extra for the filamentum Piba, it has one of the best bounces and actually feels the most like a regular basketball than all the other filaments that I've tested so far. Even though you might get a better bounce with the Fiberflex 30D filament, using the filamentum Piba gives a lot of benefits such as a sturdy filament, no dead spots, easy printing, and it actually feels a lot like a real basketball. There's still a a lot of different filaments that I plan on trying. One of them is a Fiberflex 40D. I'm hoping that that might get rid of the squishiness and dead spot issue that I've had with the 30D. A few folks also recommended this Smart Materials Smart Fill Flex filament that has a hardness rating of 93A. This could be a promising filament and it's not too expensive either. I also saw that Sane Smart has a PIBA filament that's only $60 for one kilogram and funny enough I think they actually used my airless basketball model to advertise for their PIPA filament so I guess I might as well give that a try. Let me know what I should try in the comments. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.